This webinar is sponsored by NEC Corporation, a $37 billion technology leader with a 100-year history of innovation. NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite was the first data center-grade SDN leveraging the OpenFlow protocol. Deployed globally today, Programmable Flow transforms network performance and agility by providing production-ready SDN solutions that increase flexibility, visibility, and efficiency while reducing complexity and costs. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and network function virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash SDN. Next question, if you're using hypervisor bypass from VMs, aren't you also bypassing the virtual switch and the value it provides? You're absolutely correct. If you're using hypervisor bypass, then you are directly interfacing with the virtual physical NIC. So the hypervisor switch cannot control what you're doing anymore. And the physical top of rack switch has to take control and provide whatever VLAN tagging or security feature it needs. Next best option is you're using a virtual switch that runs on Intel DPDK, and then you can get a reasonable performance. OpenFlow and XMPP represent two different ways of doing SDN. Which one will prevail in your opinion? Remember that XMPP is just a data transfer mechanism. It's like TCP or HTTP. There are two companies using XMPP for something SDN-ish today. Juniper is using XMPP in its Contrail product to download VPN v4 forwarding entries, so VRF plus label IPv4 forwarding entries to the hypervisor soft switches. And Arista is using XMPP to push CLI commands to the switches. One of them works on the IP routing table plane. The other one works on the management plane. OpenFlow, on the other hand, works on the forwarding plane. So they are complementary. One will not prevail over the other because they are solving different problems. You cannot solve the management plane problems with OpenFlow, and you cannot redirect control plane packets from a switch to the central controller with XMPP. They are complementary. Question about the management of virtual appliances. So let's use SDM for manipulating the traffic and virtualize the firewalls and load balancers. They still need to be managed. As are there solutions for these functions and the SDN controller? VMware NSX is one such solution, as is VMware's vCloud director. I'm not sure about vCloud Automation Center. In all these cases, the provisioning and the configuration and management of the load balancing and firewall VMs is done through the cloud orchestration system. Both products also allow you to integrate third-party components. Microsoft has something like Azure that you can use on the system center, not sure what it does. And now with the new versions of OpenStack that include the load balancing API, for example, there will probably be vendor plugins to integrate their VM appliances with the load balancing API. Of course, you can always use tail F for those things, but I'm not sure how much of the virtual appliance control functionality they already implemented, so you should talk with them. A question about controller-based flows in combination with standard packet forwarding, so which one gets preference? It really depends on the switch implementation. In some switches, you could dedicate certain ports to OpenFlow only forwarding, so whatever gets through that port would only pass through OpenFlow forwarding entries, and OpenFlow forwarding entries might drop that into normal forwarding, which is then a different story. Some other vendors provide OpenFlow as an augmentation mechanism. So if a packet comes in 
through a port and it's not matched by an open flow entry, it goes straight into normal processing. It doesn't go to the controller. As I said before, there are concepts like the Juniper one where the open flow entries enter the sort of routing table with different administrative distance that you can adjust. So what happens when you have a hybrid model between OpenFlow and standard forwarding on the same port really depends on the switch implementation. If we're focusing on pushing SDN on the edge, where you mentioned it adds most value, while maintaining traditional core, are today's controllers able to pull information from traditional gear in order to determine, for example, congestion in order to tune the rules? I haven't seen a single controller that would be able to do that, apart from Keridan software, which allows you to collect the net flow or any other traffic information from the physical devices and then adjust the model rebuild the model and push the new information out in the network. But let's say on the data center side, I haven't seen anyone that would use the information from the physical devices to change the behavior of the virtual devices. In most cases, the vendors that supply the overlay network virtualization solution say, well, build your network in a way that it will not be oversubscribed and then we will work well over it. Question about Keridan, didn't Cisco acquire them? Yes, they did. Next question, is OpenFlow being extended to circuit switching? Yes, you can use OpenFlow to install, for example, MPLS labels and program LFIP instead of using MPLS TP. I don't think that's the primary OpenFlow use case, but yes, you can do that. A remark that came in during our NFV discussion saying on Juniper's QFX 5100 box, you also upgrade Junos in a VM. So you have two copies of Junos that you can quickly switch between. Thanks for that remark. Can bidirectional forwarding be used with OpenFlow? In principle, yes. In practice, I haven't seen a single vendor that would be doing it. Why doesn't OpenFlow controller have a priori knowledge of end system locations via messaging from the virtualization and orchestration system? Actually, it does. It depends on what the use case is. If you're using an OpenFlow controller in a purely virtualized environment like VMware NSX, then yes, the controller can sit strictly on the management plane. It doesn't have to interact with the end systems at all because it gets all the information from the orchestration system. At least it gets the MAC information from the orchestration system. The orchestration system, for example, vCenter, still doesn't know what IP address the end host has. So if you want to capture that, you still have to listen, for example, to ARP requests if you want to do layer three forwarding. VMware NSX tried to do orchestration only forwarding and they had to fall back to a data plane interaction when they wanted to implement layer three forwarding. Microsoft's Hyper-V with Hyper-V network virtualization tried to do orchestration only layer three forwarding and they had to give up because people wanted to have dynamic IP addresses, for example, for server clusters. Amazon is totally staying out of the data plane and they use exclusively information from the orchestration system to configure IP forwarding in their virtual switches. Everyone else has to fall back to some data plane driven learning because of the legacy applications that they have to support. The situation is very similar with NEC. Good one. Can OpenFlow switches do cut through switching or is it store and forward only? Remember that the switching hardware doesn't change. OpenFlow is just a mechanism to populate the forwarding tables. If the switching hardware can do 
cut through switching, then the switching hardware can do cut through switching if the forwarding table was populated through OpenFlow. If the switching hardware couldn't do cut through switching before, it will not be able to do cut through switching when you add OpenFlow support to the switch. Next one, what happens to fragmented packets? Well, like in any layer 3 switch, if your OpenFlow solution, for example, supports layer 3, there are only certain things you can do with fragments. You cannot match on TCP and UDP numbers, obviously. And the controller has to figure out what to do with those packets. It can drop them. It can forward them based on the IP addresses. I wouldn't want to see them being punted to the controller for performance reasons, and also it would open a huge can of denial of service worms. So the handling of fragmented packets in an OpenFlow-based solution is no different than the handling of fragmented packets in traditional layer 3 switches. There are only so many ways you can tackle this problem. What if I need to perform server load balancing, but based on URLs or cookies? Then OpenFlow is not for you. In that case, something has to look into the actual session data. And in OpenFlow case, you would have to push all the traffic through the OpenFlow controller, which doesn't make sense. Use traditional load balancers. Is network discovery not part of OpenFlow? No, it's not. Network discovery has to be done by the controller, and no standard specifies how the controller should do it. So as I said, most controllers use something like LLDP, but of course you can do whatever you wish. For the endpoint discovery, it's either dynamic MAC learning, like in traditional layer two networks, or you can get the MAC addresses from the orchestration system. For layer three, it's usually listening to ARP requests. So there are only so many things you can do. Is flow spec supported by Cisco routers? As far as I know, it's not. Are the different vendor gears so different as they all use the same new Broadcom Trident Merchant chipset? Are we really getting to the white box model with that? Well, you know, the forwarding capabilities of the actual hardware are the same. Do all vendors use the same features in that hardware? Probably no. Do you configure QoS the same way on boxes from different vendors, even though there is the same underlying hardware? Definitely no. Are they running the same control plane protocols? Well, yes, everyone is running spanning tree and OSPF and so on. Are they configured the same way? Absolutely not. Are they using the same configuration paradigm? No, they are not. So you see, even though they all use the same physical hardware, their usage of the hardware is different and their control plane software is totally different. So you cannot infer anything from everyone using the same chipset. What programming languages are the best one to code for SDN? Right now, Python and Java seem to be the most popular, so I would go with those. Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation. For more information on NEC or the Programmable Flow Networking Suite, visit us online at necam.com sdn. To arrange a demo or to pilot Programmable Flow SDN, Call your NEC account rep or contact NEC directly at necam.com slash contact us. Thank you for your interest in NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite. Additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization webinars, recordings, and workshops, as well as other resources like books and case studies, are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash sdn.